Stuart Garrow here and welcome back to another episode in our video editing series. Today we are talking about the hardware required to propel our video editing software. We're going to use Final Cut Pro 10 as our demo software, but I should think the conclusions are pretty similar across other platforms. First things first, let's look at the specifications of these two computers. Mid-2015 MacBook Pro specifications as follows. 2019 MacBook Pro specifications as follows. When I was doing my research, I could find loads of information about how this MacBook Pro compared with the previous model, but I couldn't really find much in terms of how it performed versus, let's say, a 2015 MacBook Pro. Now for us, mindful that we don't upgrade our computers every year, that would have been more useful information. So I'm going to provide that for you now from a video editing perspective. I hope you find it useful. And if you are thinking of upgrading from, let's say, a 2015 MacBook Pro, then it might help you with your decision. If we look at the benchmark tests that the tech channels use to compare computers, then we can expect a two to three times performance improvement of the 2019 model versus the 2015 model. The Geekbench 5 CPU test tells us that this computer is twice as fast. The Geekbench 5 GPU test tells us that the graphics card is three times as fast. If we look at the Cinebench R20 test, we're also told that this computer is three times as fast. So some high expectations here. Let's check out the performance in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm pleased to say that the performance improvements implied by the benchmark tests were more than supported by what we discovered in Final Cut Pro 10. If we start with rendering some clips, we rendered this extremely effects-laden clip. It's very intensive on the CPU and the GPU. The 2015 MacBook Pro rendered it in 19 minutes and 19 seconds. The new computer, 6 minutes and 36 seconds. We tried again with this very intensively edited blue screen clip. Selected it, rendered it, 2015 model, 1 minute and 14 seconds. 2019 model, 14 seconds. An enormous improvement in performance. We use a motion blur plugin all the time to give us a nice look when we do our time remapping and our speed ramps. But I'm kind of hesitant to use it nowadays because it grinds Final Cut to a halt, it's just so computer intensive. You have to select the clip, render it, then you can watch it back, see if you need to tweak it, go through the process many times. It's very, very slow. Anyway, we tested it on a little clip and the render process took one minute and 29 seconds on the old computer. It took eight seconds on the new computer. Night and day productivity improvement there. If you've seen our video, learn everything you need to know about Final Cut Pro in 20 minutes, you'll know that we do our editing up in the browser window. Before we bring anything down into the timeline, we're scrubbing through super fast, looking for in points, out points, favoriting that, compiling a list of selects from which we then make our edit on the timeline. The speed at which you can scrub through footage is very, very important. And it's a little bit difficult to quantify, but I can tell you that the general ease of use on this computer is far, far better. Another plugin we use quite frequently is a motion tracking plugin. You can get all kinds of cool effects and you can track text on your screen and all that kind of stuff, but it's extremely computer intensive. And again, it makes me hesitant to use it because it just slows the editing process to a halt. Well, anyway, I did a test on this to see how quickly it could track something like 500 frames. On the old computer, nine minute and 57 seconds. On the new computer, two minutes and 17 seconds. Stabilizing clips is something that we do quite often, shaky handheld footage or just smoothing out a drone tilt or something like that. The performance disparity wasn't so huge here. 20 seconds here to do the stabilization process on the 2015 model, 14 seconds on the 2019 model. Finally, a 4K exporting test. Old computer did it in 15 minutes and 46 seconds. The new computer did it in four minutes and 39 seconds. So I was pleased to see that our enormous investment in this new MacBook Pro was validated by these tests. Unquestionably, there are huge productivity improvements to be had from a video editing perspective. From our perspective, this is what we do. Time is money, productivity is everything. With a young family, time is a scarce resource. Does that mean you should go out and spend your life savings on a new computer? No, absolutely not. I don't know your needs, your wants, your budgets. I don't know what you do for a living. I don't know how much benefit you will get out of this. To be honest with you, from a 
day-to-day -day use perspective, there's no need to upgrade from this mid-2015 MacBook Pro. We can edit uh, 4K footage all day long on this. And if you haven't seen our video on eight ways to speed up Final Cut Pro, do check that out as well if you are struggling for performance. At the very least, get your footage proxied and then work with that. That's gonna get you another five years out of this computer, to be honest with you. From a professional standpoint, yes, this has been worth every penny. Productivity is very, very important. But as I say, I just wanted to give you some information to do with as you wish. If you're new to the channel, do join us. We've got lots of content like this. Communicate with us in the comments below. We've got a nice community here. We're building out the channel, various topics all related to video editing, filmmaking, drone flying, all that kind of stuff. And we look forward to seeing you next time.